the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, heavenly virtues, cherubim and seraphim, and all you holy men and women of God, especially my patrons, intercede for me that I may be worthy to offer this sacrifice to Almighty God, to the praise and glory of his name, for my good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Enter Tantaphon. All who are thirsty, come to the water, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. The intention for this Mass is offered for Terence O'Brien. It is Tuesday of the fourth week of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east, with the measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and he had me through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand, and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again he measured off a thousand, and, he had, and we weighed. The water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade. For the water had risen so high it had become a river, that he could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river... I saw the very many trees on both sides. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district, down upon the Arabah, and it empties into the sea, the salt waters, which make it fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live. And there shall be abundant fish, for wherever this water comes from the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, Fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fall. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered from the flow of the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The The Lord Lord of hosts is with with us. us. Our stronghold is the God God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. 
God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was in Jerusalem, at the Sheep Gate, a pool called in Hebrew Bethsaida, with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been ill for a long time and said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up while I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take up and walk? The man who healed me did not know who it, the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well, do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, Jesus encountered a royal official who wanted our Lord to accompany him to cure his son. And Jesus uh, did heal, but not in the way that the official wanted or even expected. Today, Jesus encounters a man who was ill for 38 years and asks a seemingly heartless question. Do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be saved? They all have the same root word. For Jesus doesn't just come to take our souls to heaven, but to restore everything that is broken and lost. Our physical health, our relationships, our life with the Lord, Jesus comes to restore everything. He is Savior. He is the one who restores. But the paralytic goes on to explain that nobody places him in the water, and everyone else gets in before him. After the healing, Jesus slips away and quietly searches him out and warns him, Do not sin, so that nothing worse may happen to you. In many of the early commentaries, and in fact some of the very ancient manuscripts of Scripture, there is additional verses to help us understand this reality, that there were these these pools outside of the temple area. And as shepherds would bring in the sheep to be slaughtered and sacrificed, they would cleanse them in these pools. And many of these pools were natural springs that would bubble up. And the ancient Jews would, would recognize that in these springs there were curative powers. They had that, that angels hovered over the waters that caused them to bubble. And so whoever was the first one to get in when the spring would start to, to gurgle uh, would be healed of whatever infirmity they had. And so it was really imperative to be first, but you had to have a measure of health or at least certain friends to do that. So this, this paralytic is explaining that he has been there for 38 years, essentially begging at the mercy of everyone else. So the Lord asks not just a heartless question, do you want to be well, because the answer is, should be obvious. But the question is, are you ready for your life to change? 
Are you ready to live on your own? You can no longer be a beggar after this point. You have been here for 38 years, you probably don't have a trade. You don't have a skill. So if you are restored to health, you don't have a right to beg. Nobody will support you. You have to support yourself. Your life has to be radically different after encountering Jesus, after receiving this grace. This grace isn't free in the sense that it demands of us something, namely our total response. So the Lord gives him this option, rise. He doesn't have to, but he does. 38 years he had survived as a beggar. 38 years should be very um, significant for us because these are the number of years after the rebellion in the desert that the people wandered in rebellion back and forth with the Lord, struggling to embrace what the Lord had asked them as they were going to the promised land. For 38 years, this rebelliousness, this submission back and forth. So we can see the spirit within this beggar as well. Because when Jesus asks him a very direct question, he does not give a direct answer. Rather, he blames others. Perhaps he has this sense of entitlement. That it's other people's fault that I am the way I am. Perhaps he's saying it's somebody else's responsibility to do this for me. Perhaps he has this rancor in his heart, blaming others. Perhaps he is so downcast at other people's selfishness to see how they are only concerned about themselves, getting in the pool first themselves rather than thinking of others. And certainly we can be overwhelmed by similar images today, people hoarding toilet paper or whatever it is, people only concerned with their own well-being, with their own families, not being concerned with their literal or figurative neighbors, having this sense of entitlements. What are others going to do for me? Being filled with a similar rancor, of making demands on other people, that it's everybody else's fault that the things are the way they are. Now, this feast was likely Pentecost, and it was the third sign that Jesus gives. This feast when all the Jews were going to Jerusalem to commemorate when Moses received the law from God and then imparted it to the people. So it's also very significant that Jesus is clarifying what the Sabbath is all about. That Jesus does this on the Sabbath to restore what was lost. That when God imparts his law, it's not something external to us. It's not an imposition that God's just saying, I'm going to just have a checkboard to make sure you you, um, check all the boxes, jump through all the hoops, and if you mess up, I'm going to get you. That's not what God's law is about. That's not what the Sabbath rest is about. And so I think all of us are challenged to rediscover the Sabbath rest, to rediscover the law of God, and to enter into the real heart and the real meaning and the real purpose of this rest, which is ultimately to encounter God. And we do this profoundly through the sacraments, through our personal prayer. We do this profoundly by by encountering the Lord in our hearts, but also through each other. That could be difficult, especially in this time of isolation. It could be difficult for those who are alone, to recognize that we are indeed social creatures because we're made in the image and likeness of the Holy Trinity. But in this absence, absence from the Lord and the Holy Eucharist, this absence from our social interaction, it should create a void where we recognize that needs to be fulfilled ultimately in God, but then God willing when things get back to normal to have an appropriate balance, these more human social interactions, appropriate balance of our Sunday rest, appropriate balance of encountering the Lord in community. And then lastly, our Lord searches this man out to clarify him. Our Lord doesn't perform this miracle to put on a show. He doesn't perform this miracle to receive adulation from others. He doesn't perform this miracle um, to be praised. So in our good deeds, uh, we should not do that for the praise of others, whether or not it's sharing our toilet paper or whatever that is. We don't do it uh, to receive thanks. And often, most people are um, not grateful. They don't express that gratitude. They have this sense of entitlement. But we don't do these things for that gratitude. We do it because it's the right thing to do. So Jesus performs this miracle and then quietly searches this man out. And then warns him, don't sin. That yes, he came to restore his physical health, 
but ultimately Jesus wants to restore his spiritual health. That is, rightfully concerned as we are with our physical well-being, with our health right now, how much more concerned should we be with our spiritual well-being? As much as we're trying to avoid getting this virus, how much more so should we avoid sin? That Jesus is saying it is much worse to commit sin than it is to be physically impeded. It is much worse to be separated from the Lord in eternity than to have this physical pain or inability. And so, at the heart, we should hate sin, ultimately because we love God. That God is not out to get us, He's not out to punish us, but He's out to be with us. And sin prevents that from happening. And so at this Mass, as our Lord becomes present, body, blood, soul, and divinity, may we pray this ache that we have to receive our Lord in the Most Holy Eucharist will be fulfilled. Will be fulfilled as soon as possible here on earth, and ultimately fulfilled in heaven. May this void that we all experience by encountering Him in His Word, in His Sacrament, and each other, be fulfilled through the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints who are interceding for us and preparing us to encounter our Lord with them in heaven. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and now forever. forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as Creator, for this our mortal life and effects in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in, their, in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Michael our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, Lissy and Caitlin, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that, through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ your Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant Terence O'Brien, who has gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant him, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ your Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, for John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we might find help for our bodies, now and likewise in the times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Prosit, promnibus, sing please. Prayer of Thanksgiving from St. Bonaventure. Most sweet Lord Jesus, pierce my inmost heart with your most dear and most bracing wound of your love. Pierce it with true, serene, apostolic, and most holy charity, 
that my soul may ever yearn and melt with love for you and for the desire to possess you. May my soul be drawn toward you and overwhelmed with the hope of entering your courts. May it long to be dissolved and to be with you. Grant that my soul may hunger for you, the bread of angels and the food of holy souls, our super-substantial bread, having in itself every sweetness and good taste, having the delightfulness of all charms, of all the charms of my heart. May my heart always long for you and find its nourishment in you, on whom the angels long to gaze, and may my inmost heart be filled with the sweetness of your savor. And may heart thirst for you, the fountain of life and of wisdom, and of knowledge and of eternal life, the torrent of pleasure and the richness of the house of God. May my heart always draw near to you, seek you, catch sight of you, be drawn to you, and arrive at your presence. May my heart think of you, speak of you, do all things that it does for the glory of your name. With humility and care, and affection and delight, with eagerness and with a deep feeling, with the perseverance to the end. Thus, may you alone always be my hope, all my confidence, my joy, my rest, my tranquility, my peace, all that charms me, my fragrance, my sweetness, my food, my nourishment, my refuge, my help, my wisdom, my portion, my possession, my treasure. In you may my mind and my heart be fixed and secure, rooted forever without any change. Amen.